Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. It's a joy for me to be here with you to celebrate the Sacrament of Confirmation and to celebrate the Eucharist on this third Sunday of Lent on such a beautiful day here in Mid-Missouri. And so, as we hear proclaimed in the reading of the scriptures this afternoon, of the necessity to cleanse our hearts in order to be open to the gift of God's grace and salvation, let us practice that here and now as we prepare ourselves for this sacred celebration of the mystery of Christ's love for us and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit by acknowledging our need for repentance and also the mercy of God. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, mercy. have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, mercy. have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. book of Exodus. In those days, God delivered all these commandments. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery. You shall not have other gods besides me. You shall not carve idols for yourselves in the shape of anything in the sky above or on the earth below or in the waters beneath the earth. You shall not bow down before them or worship them, for I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God inflicting punishment for their father's wickedness on the children of those who hate me, down to the third and fourth generation, but bestowing mercy down to the thousandth generation on the children of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. For the Lord will not leave unpunished the one who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Six days you may labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of the Lord your God. No work may be done then either by you or your son or daughter or your male or female slave or your beast or by the alien who lives with you. In six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them. But on the seventh day, he rested. That is why the Lord has blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your mother and your... Honor your father and your mother, that you may have a long life in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male or female slave, nor his ox or ass, nor anything else that belongs to him. The word of the Lord.
the responsorial psalm. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. They are more precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold, sweeter also than syrup or honey from the comb. Second reading, a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified. A stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to gentle Gentiles, but to those who are called Jews and Greeks alike. Christ, the power of God and the, the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them out all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen and spill the coins of the money changers and overturn their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recall the words of scripture, zeal for your house will consume me. All this the Jews, at this the Jews answered and said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus then answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. While he was in Jerusalem for the feast of Passover, many began to believe in his name when they saw the signs he was doing. But Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all and did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it well. The Gospel of the Lord.
Bishop McKnight, with joy I present to you the following candidates for confirmation from the parishes of St. Lawrence and St. Anthony. Trent Bax, Isaac Bax, Ella Lucas, Carter Otto, Macy Otto, Lauren Strump, Wyatt Tweehouse, Jada Dicknight, Aaron Heckemeyer, Levi Holtmeyer, Zachary Holtmeyer, Lane Irwin, Carter Kemna, Tori Kemna, Jace Kiesel, Kira McDonald, Addie Oligschlager, Caleb Oligschlager, Peyton Oligschlager, Trey Strump, Adam Tellman, Emma Weber, Caroline Booster, Autumn Deerhoff, Joshua Geller, Chloe Hecker, Brock Lucas, Gerald Lichtemeyer, Shelby Oligschlager, Lauren Otto, Megan Plossmeyer, Audrey Strump, Elizabeth Strump, Emily Wilby, Kay Humphrey, Stella Humphrey, Cade Wright, Sydney Inglemeyer, Jaden Rowden, Harley Inglemeyer, Tasia Green, Cheyenne Monks, and Cody Weber. It is with great joy that I formally accept you as candidates for the Sacrament of Confirmation. Congratulations to you all. And congratulations to Kim and to all who have been involved, Father, deacons, and whoever, in their formation this past year. Kind of an unusual year, to say the least, but it's a great joy that we're able to celebrate it here on a Sunday, no less, with the celebration of Mass. Father Joby, right before Mass began, informed me that the church is going to be a little brighter than usual because some of the stained glass in the sanctuary has been removed for repair. And it's just, and indeed it is, it's bright. And I thought to myself, well, how perfect for the gift of the Holy Spirit to brighten up the church. In the gospel today, we are reminded of how important physical churches are in our relationship with God. What point, if they weren't that important, if Jesus' gospel was to say physical churches don't have any meaning or importance, why would he bother with the cleansing of the temple, the house of the Lord? Zeal consumes me. It's because we know that these sacred spaces remind us, and of course, the church is not the building, it's the people. And indeed, our very bodies are temples, temples of the Holy Spirit. And today, if you think about our Holy Father on his apostolic journey to Iraq, the first time ever that a pope has traveled there. And he went where? Today he celebrated Mass near a church that was bombed, decimated by the terrorists. How important it is for those people there to have the pope come to them and to <clears throat> celebrate the sacred liturgies and their various holy sites. It is important for us in the communities that we live to be a bright and beautiful symbol of the church, for people to see the beauty of our faith. And so there is an importance to art in Catholic sacred spaces. There's an importance that we spend a lot of time and energy to this very building. But it's all based upon our relationship with God and the importance of our faith being lived out in the very bodies that were washed with the waters of baptism and now to be anointed with the chrism of salvation, symbolic of the gift of the Holy Spirit. Both the reading from the gospel about Jesus cleansing the temple and the reading from the book of Exodus reminds us how we have to do that cleansing first before salvation can come. On this Sunday, in all Catholic churches throughout the world, all the 
catechumens that will be baptized at the Easter Vigil are celebrating their first scrutiny, which is basically a cleansing, a cleaning of the, of the house, if you will, in preparation for the gift of God himself in the sacraments of our Easter faith. All throughout the world, this is going on today, the first of three. And in that first reading from the book of Exodus, notice and recall that the gift of the Ten Commandments, that's what they are. They're not a burden. God didn't give us the Ten Commandments just to make life a little bit more miserable for us so he can take great delight in seeing us suffer. No, they are the way to life and that restored relationship with our Heavenly Father. But the Israelites did not receive the Ten Commandments in Egypt. They had to go out into the desert first. The time of preparation. Now you, Confirmandi, have been in preparation for this sacrament, not just this past year, but from the very moment of your baptism. Most of you were baptized as little babies and held in the arms of your mother or your father when they brought you into either this church or one like it, and they celebrated the gift of new life, not only in their family, but the gift of new life given to you in baptism, your first outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And that gift of the sacrament of baptism, which we know as the gateway sacrament, in some sense is like a clearing. The gift of the grace of baptism, which washes away original sin, allows us to receive all the other sacraments that Christ has instituted for us. Because we need all the graces of those sacraments. Now, the gift of the Spirit at baptism was to establish your identity, your very relationship with God the Father, as His Son or daughter. We use the language of adopted sons and daughters, but we all pertain to the family of God by baptism. And that sacrament is what allows for your individual salvation. The gift of the Spirit in confirmation, however, is not so much for you as it is to help you in carrying out the mission of the church those special gifts of the Holy Spirit, of wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and counsel, have to do with understanding the faith, understanding God's revelation of himself as love, with a capital L, as Jesus revealed. But then also the gifts of fortitude, strength, piety, reverence. And finally, as the scriptures tell us, the most important gift, fear of the Lord. Fear not in the sense of being afraid of God, but fear trembling in his presence. Being in awe of the majesty of God and knowing how powerful and almighty and all-knowing that he is, he gave his only son for you. That's the fear of the Lord. My brothers and sisters in Christ, you who are about to be confirmed to strengthen your faith and your ability to witness this faith out in the world, I beg you with your youthfulness and your fresh pair of eyes of seeing what's going on in our world today and of knowing your faith, I beg you to help us to be better at being the church of Jesus Christ. One of the fundamental things that we have to get better at as a church, especially in our country, and perhaps, let's say it, in our state or even in our diocese, is the part about witnessing first in our actions. And let the words later. Remember what I said about the importance of beauty in attracting people to the faith, the importance 
of having a beautiful church in a community, to be a sign of God's presence among his people. There is nothing more beautiful than one who is willing to make sacrifice for another. Out of charity, out of faith, out of hope. That's what we desire to see in your life, in your choice of vocation and discernment with God, that you live a life of sacrificial love. That is what this sacrament of confirmation is all about. Would the candidates for confirmation please stand to renew your baptismal promises. I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and empty promises? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who today through the sacrament of confirmation, is given to you in a special way, just as he was given to the apostles on the day of Pentecost. Amen. Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? Amen. This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Dearly beloved, let us pray to God the Almighty Father for these, his adopted sons and daughters, already born again in eternal life in baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts and through his anointing, Confirm, conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these your servants to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin. Send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety, Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord, through Christ our Lord.
Isidore will be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace. <laughs> Gemma, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Thank you, Sebastian. Sebastian, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Christopher, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, please stand and let us humbly pray to God, the Almighty Father, and be of one mind in our prayer, just as faith, hope, and charity, which proceed from his Holy Spirit, are one. For these his servants, whom the gift of the Holy Spirit has confirmed, that planted in faith and grounded in love, they may bear witness to Christ the Lord by their way of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For their parents and sponsors, that by word and example they may continue to encourage those whom they have sponsored in the faith to follow in the footsteps of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the Holy Church of God, together with Francis our Pope, Sean our Bishop, and all the bishops, that gathered by the Holy Spirit 
the church may grow and increase in unity of faith and love until the coming of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For an increase of vocations to the priesthood, consecrated life, and for the sanctification of marriage in our parish and in our diocese, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For the whole world, that all people who have one maker and father may acknowledge one another as brothers and sisters without discrimination of race or nation and with sincere hearts seek the kingdom of God, which is peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, and for the God who gave the Holy Spirit to your apostles and willed that through them and their successors, the same Spirit be handed on to the rest of the faithful. Listen favorably to our prayer and grant that your divine grace, which was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, may now spread through the hearts of those who believe in you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts that freed from disordered affections they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Mm -hmm.
gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Shaw, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, Lord, your servants, whom we have been pleased to confirm today by bestowing the Holy Spirit and keep them in your grace. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. How mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph and spouse, blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. So we have the courage to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to just give but only sin.
Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, we should back tonight. We thank you all. Uh, thank you for uh, your presence here. Um, well, the church, as you mentioned, you know, we have been uh, restoring the church, and of course, our own life as well. So, thank you for your presence, and you will have to come back to bless our altar, you know, reconsecrate our altar, everything here. So, uh, again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for uh, our wonderful bishop. Thank you very much. Thanks to all of uh, you to be here. It's because of you we are here, right? It's because of all our 44 students that we are here today. So thank you all for he being here. And again, just a reminder, this is not the last day of your Christian life. This is the first day as the complete Christian, right? You are empowered by the Holy Spirit to go out and witness to him. So you are reconsecrated completely as the temple of the Holy Spirit. So I hope to see you in church every Sunday. Huh? I hope to see you back in the CCD classes as well. Again, it's not the end. It's just the beginning of your complete journey as a Christian. Thank you all. Say a prayer for our page bags. She was supposed to be here with us. Now she's in the hospital, so I request you all to uh, keep our page uh, in our prayers. Deacon um, Rick Weiss and um, Steve, thank you so much for your help. Thank you all the boys for our help. And then just uh, uh, also Kim Plasmeyer, Randy Holtmeyer, Janet Rickenberg, Brian Bags, R.G. Chipman, Peggy Weber, our wonderful choir, and our faith coordinator, Andrea Holtmeyer, and our secretary, Ann Weber. And thank you, everyone, for being here. And we, we all together work together and we pray together so that we can continue as a wonderful Christian community, wonderful presence of Christ in this place, in this time. Thank you all for being here. And uh, let's wait for our bishop's uh, blessings. For the final blessing, let's turn, uh, her name is Paige, a member of the class that's in the hospital. Let's offer a Hail Mary and turn to our mother uh, for her intercession. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us. Let us pray. Direct, O Lord, we pray, the hearts of your faithful, and in your kindness grant your servants this grace, that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen.